by men of stature and action. I think your man fits the idealized concept. Make him colorful, tough, aggressive. Take off your silk gloves for a change. Any answer, ma'am? No. I guess I'll just have to take off my silk gloves. Colorful, tough, aggressive. Which one are you going to use, ma'am? The winner, of course. Johnny, you was a rebel. He rode through the West. Did Johnny Uma, the rebel, he wandered alone. Johnny Uma. Stay out of this. Took my hand off, mister. And for no real cause. I need it. It's a tool of my trade. Goes with that gun over there. He didn't pay you for shining them boots, boy. Why don't you take them out in the street and dirty them up the way they were? You scuff up them boots, boy, you'll be picking the quickest way you ever saw to not grow any older. Well, he's Jack Slater, mister. Ain't you heard tell about him? Hand me those boots, boy. Always funny, mister. You, know, you could get into trouble helping somebody you don't even know. But, I'll, but I'm sure be holding to you. What's your name, boy? Jody Webster. Six notches, huh? And room for more. How do you spell your name, mister? Y-U-M-A. Yuma. Johnny Yuma. And you better stop at six. That was a $50 window. Which one pays for it? Now, look at me. Getting thrown through the window wasn't my idea. Mr. Yuma seems like your best bet. He's a pure hog for the glory of seeing a debt squared. You dig up $50, Yuma? Well, unless I had someone else's pants on. I'll pay for the window, Mr. Corby. Gallantry should be rewarded. We could consider it a loan, Mr. Yuma, if you'd prefer. Well, it'll take me a little time to pay you back. I'm in no hurry. We can work something out. I doubt if you'll have time to work out $50 worth, ma'am. You dirtied up my boots, Yuma. And before I take you out for good, I'm gonna make you crawl on your knees and look them clean and shiny again. Better hope the doctor heals me up real slow, ma'am. Young man, what was the fight all about? Well, when I finished shining his boots, he tossed me a nickel into the dirt. I went to pick it up, he shot a hole in it and laughed. Like he always does. Then Mr. Yuma jumped in before he could throw me another nickel. You seem to have fine, noble instincts, Mr. Yuma. I'd like to get to know you better. I'm Emily Stevens. I might have been too fast with my instincts, ma'am. You didn't have to take off your glove for me, ma'am. <laughs> 
silk gloves don't fit in very well in this country. I'm at the hotel. I do hope you'll come and visit me. If you're staying in town. Well, I think I'll be staying in town for a while. Business? Yes, ma'am. I owe you $50. <laughs> Bought yourself a lot of writing material for fifty dollars. So they want more color, interest, action in my stories of the raw frontier. To the editor of the St. Joe Ledger. Today, in the dirty, sweaty town of free and easy. A bully named Jack Slater, who makes a practice of shoving small boys around, made the mistake of trying to push a man. Well, you sure got your silk gloves off in a hurry, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Corby, let's send out my first story about Johnny Yuma. Yeah, over the wire? Well, that'll, that'll come steep, ma'am. Money well, doesn't make any difference. I just want to prove to my editor that I can write with my bare fist. Now, ma'am, uh, this name, Emily Mortimer Stevens, it, it don't hardly sound very fisty to me. Of course I shouldn't use my own name. How does Tex Brannigan sound to you? Good, good, and it's got lots of color. Now that there is a name with hair on his chest. You will keep Tex Brannigan a secret from Mr. Yuma, won't you? I want to learn all I can about him without letting him know why. Miss Stevens, anything you have to say in this here office goes in one ear and gets lost in this vast confusion. <laughs> I'm delighted you could join me for coffee, Johnny. Thank you. You know, Johnny, I... I could imagine you distinguished yourself during the war. I guess I did, ma'am. In what way? I came out of it alive. Mr. Yuma. <laughs> I was referring to acts of bravery. Is your room across the hall comfortable, Johnny? Oh, yes, ma'am. First feather bed I've laid down in years. Why'd you get it for me? Hmm. I'm a timid soul, a real tender foot. And in a town like this, I just feel safer with someone like you close by. You look like the kind of man who'd face a grizzly with a stick. Well, um, I don't know how I can pay you back for what I owe you. Well, you could show me around tomorrow. There are places I wouldn't dare venture into alone, and I do want to see what the real frontier's like. Oh, the darker corners, the rough edges, things like that. All right, ma'am. You just knock on my door when you're ready. Thanks for the warm room, ma'am. Good night. His clothing was splendid, and he was meticulously groomed. The bright gold medals glinted in the sunlight. He wore them with fierce pride on his chest in the manner of a cavalier, a latter-day southern cavalier who had fought to preserve the dignity of gracious living and the comforts he was loath to surrender. What are you doing here? I thought you were sleeping. I want to surprise you. Shine your shoes, sort of pay you back for taking my side today. Come on in. You know it's past midnight. You should be home in bed. Well, I haven't got any home. No family either? No, sir. Since when? Two years ago. They were killed by Comanches up in Fargo. I've been working my way south where it's warmer. 
Well, you better bunk here tonight. Tell you what, I'll flip a coin. The better the chair, call it. Well, that wouldn't be fair if I won it. It's your bed. Call it. Heads. Tails, you lose. I found out one thing sneaking in here like I did. What's that? You're fast. Mr. Yuma? Yes, Jody. Could that Jack Slater kill you? Well, I suppose he could if he tried hard enough. You think he'll try? He said he would. Been out of touch of things these past few days. Been too busy hauling the lady around to know what's going on. This here's a roulette. This here's a roulette wheel, ma'am. <laughs> and uh, over there's a faro table. And leaning up against the wall is something they missed when they swept out. The stagecoach driver brought this clipping to me. It's from the St. Joe Ledger. It says here I'm a bully. Makes you out a real ring-tailed wonder. You like reading about yourself, Yuma? It's gonna make even better reading when it tells how you died. <laughs> well, pacing up and down that floor won't hurry the answer to your message, ma'am. Are you sure it went out just as I wrote it? Well, here's a message I sent you editor, Miss Stevens. Please kill all unpublished copy I have sent you. Unwittingly, I've encouraged a feud between two men that can end only with a gunfight. I do not want the responsibility of. Is that from St. Joe? Yeah. Emily. Now, you are writing with a lightning bolt. No reason for not printing articles. If gunfight occurs, be there. Report results. By thunder at last, you're writing like your old man. I was afraid he would say that. I don't remember sending anything out that would spark a gunfight, ma'am. You didn't read the stories I sent out by mail in the last two weeks. Most of them still unpublished. I don't think you'd let me send them by telegraph, Mr. Corby. Yeah, well, that's sticky, ma'am. Worse. I over-romanticized Johnny Yuma so much, I... I made him a glorified, heroic monstrosity. Oh, I'd just die if Johnny found out I did this to him. Well, if they face each other over a gun barrel, it'll be Yuma that'll die. His long blonde hair blowing in the breeze made Yuma's scalp a tempting one. But 20 Apache warriors died trying to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, read this part. Johnny Yuma's right hand moved like the strike of a cobra. 
and his gun spat six bullets into the heart of the desperado. <laughs> <laughs> and as the three men closed in with guns drawn, Johnny's pistol drilled bullets between their eyes before their fingers could squeeze triggers. You are fast. <laughs> And the two giant Wade brothers came crashing down like felled trees. But Johnny Yuma was indeed the kind of man who could face a grizzly bear with a stick. The bullet smashed the grizzly bear's skull. And Johnny Yuma? Yuma, Yuma, Yuma. Calmly ejected an empty shell from his pistol and blew out white smoke from the barrel. <laughs> Anybody here know somebody named Tex Brannigan? Well, whoever he is, he's fattening you up for the market, Yuma. I didn't think you took on anything bigger than a small boy, Slater. We can go to market together any time now. <laughs> Hello, Tex. Or should I call you Mr. Brannigan? How did you know? And he knew the real frontier. The dark corners, the rough edges. Your very own words. And you made the mistake of putting them in print. I'll promise you one thing, ma'am. I'm not the kind of fool who faces a grizzly with a stick. Do what you want to. Go ahead and punish me, Johnny. I deserve it. Why'd you have to pump me up like a big pink balloon everybody would want to let the air out of? Johnny. My editor was a spike-chewing, two-fisted journalist who covered everything from the Civil War to the Great Plague. Well, he's old now. He wanted someone to carry on for him. Besides being my editor, he happens to be my father. I thought I could carry on for him by discovering a heroic Western character and putting him in print. I'm sorry, Johnny. Yeah? Well, there's a man in town who wants to put me out of print for good. And if he does that, you'll have yourself another pumped up hero you can write about. Jack Slater. If I was to ever meet your Johnny, you might want to... I'd want to... I'd want to rip off his bright gold medals. It was easy to make you a hero, Johnny. I know it was wrong. I'll show you how wrong. We got here. The hero brought his own audience. The paper just come from St. Joe. Here, read this part to the folks. And as Johnny Yuma fired both pistols at the ruffian, he gallantly tipped his hat to the young lady. Now firing both pistols and tipping your hat. Why, you must have three hands, Yuma. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I need's one. The killing's not gonna prove anything, Slater. Make your move, Yuma. Excuse me. You said you'd make me do this, Slater. Well, I'm doing it.
three hands are mighty useful, Reb, for shining boots. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes worlds of courage to be a coward, doesn't it? Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Now let's see if you can put them together again. Johnny Yuma just went out of print, as bravely as I would have expected him to. I won't bring him back to life again. <laughs> Slater, turn around. Something eating you, boy? You still owe me for shining your boots. Now you get the brush and you shine mine. <laughs> I ain't much good at shining boots, boy. You saw Mr. Yuma do it. So you can do it, too. Well, man with the gun's always right, I figure. Well, Yuma, looks like you got a friend to take up your fight. <gasps> Hey, boy, you got some energy you better work off. Well, my boots are shined. Say, why don't you do me a dance, boy? Dance, boy. You, that boy's in trouble. On account of you. Didn't mean to hit the boy. Just funnin' again, huh? Well, your funnin's gonna have us looking down each other's gun barrels. There's no bullets left in this one. You know, we already had one go around, Yuma. And you come in second. Yeah. I'm a slow learner. How about another lesson? Ma'am, could you move, please? I can't see. Bartender. Draw me a beer. What do you know? Same place where he put the bullet in the boy. You called that shot, Rev. Could have just as easily been my head. Yeah, it could have been. I'd have been dead from a bad case of slow. I'm going to try to take life a little more serious from now on. How do you think this story will be written up in the paper? I don't think it will be, Jody. Well, Jody, you'll know when a fly lands on that foot for a few days, but uh, you'll live. Your own mother couldn't have done better. Thanks, man. I'd hang around and take you along, but I'm heading north, and I remember you like living where it's warmer. That's all right. I'm sort of a lone wolf anyway. What are you going to do, Miss Stevens? Back to the range. Uh, cooking and baking hints by Aunt Emily. Oh, uh, ma'am, how uh, warm does it get in St. Joe? Oh, it's getting warmer all the time. You know, I might be able to promote a job for you, Jody. Me? Copy boy on the ledger, maybe, or in the print shop. You and the editor would be quite a combination. Well, I better be moving along. I want to see what the real frontier's like. Uh, you know, the uh, darker corners, the rough edges. Goodbye, Johnny. 
Goodbye, man. So long, Joey. Johnny Emo was a rebel. He roamed through the West. Did Johnny Emo the rebel? He wandered alone. He got fighting mad. This rebel lad. He packed no star as he wandered far where the only law was a hook and a draw. The away, rebel, away, Johnny away, Yuma, the rebel. he searched the land, this restless land. He was panther quick and leather tough if he figured that he had been pushed enough. The rebel, John Yuma. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.